starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Economic Development Webinar Series. I'm Susan Lowe, and I'm with the Design Coordination and Outreach Branch of the Ministry of Jobs, Trade, and Technology. I'm here to moderate today's webinar and uh, keep our large staff of presenters uh, herded. They're a little like cats, these bunch. Looking forward to a great session today on strategic planning for economic development. I may be a little odd because strategic planning is one of my favorite subjects in the whole world. So this is like Christmas for me. Uh, I'm located in Victoria, BC on unceded territory of the Lekwungen people known today as the Esquimalt and Songhees First Nations. And uh, I'll do a little um, run through our presenter list today. We have uh, Mark Vondragana, uh, he's Morning, on the webcam, welcome. and we've got uh, Declan Corstania, who Morning. is also on webcam. Uh, Joanne Doddridge is joining us from 100 Mile House. Uh, she's not using a webcam today. And then Kathy Lachman and Jeff Miller are coming to us from Campbell River. Uh, before we go too much further, I'll just review the housekeeping items. Uh, so let's have a look at your tools for participation. I am sure that there is going to be many questions and we might even get some discussion rolling today. Um, the orange arrow at the top of your control panel lets you shrink the panel to the side of the screen. Uh, it automatically shrinks if you don't do anything for a while. And if you're finding that the slide presentation is really small on your screen, that's a that's a you thing. What you need to do is actually adjust the size of the GoToWebinar screen. I can't fix it for you, unfortunately. It's it's on your computer. Um, the orange microphone shows that you're muted. Um, if we're starting discussion um, and turns green, then you can speak on the webinar. But please keep yourself muted by default just in case. Uh, the blue box lets you expand the entire webinar interface to your full screen so you're not distracted by your email or other tasks that might be going on. The little hand icon lets you raise your hand to show that you want to speak. Um, we may be doing some of that, or uh, you can also enter in a question in the enter a question to staff box on your control panel. And finally, you've got two options for connecting to audio uh, via your computer over uh, VoIP or by phoning in. So if you click on the phone call radio button, you will get a phone number to call with an access number for this webinar and a personal identification number for you individually. Uh, if you don't enter in your PIN, I can't mute or unmute you. So that's an important thing to enter your PIN. Uh, just reminder, if you're joining us from the Instant Join web app, uh, the audio settings are behind the little gear. They may, they're may they not hiding on you. Well, they are. They're just in a different place. And um, we are recording today's session. And uh, it will be posted with the presentations in about a week on our website, uh, BC gov.bc.ca slash economic development. And you look under the BC Ideas Exchange section in the webinars and then the past webinars recordings, and you'll find it there. Uh, it takes me about a week to get the recording converted and sent to our people to put it onto YouTube and then posted to our website. So should be around by next Tuesday. Um, before we carry on, this is the upfront uh, call for volunteers. We're doing some... Uh, user interface design work on our website. And we're looking for people who use our website for a brief interview with my coworker, Liz. So if you're interested in helping us improve our website, please contact us, economicdevelopment at gov.bc.ca, and we'll connect you with Liz. All right. With no further ado, I'm going to let uh, Mark and Kathy take it over. Mark can introduce, uh, you can introduce yourself, Mark, and we'll, we'll let you take it away because we've got a, a busy schedule. Thanks, Mark. Sure. Okay. So I need uh, the control to share my screen here. Here so it comes. There you go. If I hit the drop down. Excellent. So people should now see my intro slides. So uh, I'm going to lead off talking about the strategic planning toolkits and um, Presenters are myself and Kathy Lockman. We both work for Regional Economic Operations Branch, and you can see we're all very happy people. So uh, strategic planning, um, essentially it's a process that looks at uh, your current situation and compares that to where you'd like to be uh, within a, a certain period of time. Um, why would you do strategic planning? 
uh, essentially people that have, have done it um, agree that uh, and, and have a plan agree that it's effective. Um, it allows communities to be responsive uh, to funding opportunities by already having a plan in place and, and knowing what their priorities are. Um, it helps with coordination of efforts, um, making connections within your community. It helps to market your uh, community and attract investment. Uh, it gets past just talking, which uh, communities like to do, talk, 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 politicians, whatnot. Um, and it helps keep track of where you're going and uh, seeing if you're making a difference uh, with your economic development uh, efforts. Uh, typically, uh, this describes the state most communities are in. Um, either they, uh, what we found is either they have a plan, uh, but they don't really have action, um, or they have lots of action with no plan. And, and what we mean by this is, is a lot of communities have said, okay, we need a economic development plan. They've hired a consultant to come in and, and do it. Um, they've gone through a big process. They've got a, you know, a two inch thick document and it sits on a shelf and it, it never gets used. Um, in a lot of cases it's got, you know, 30 to 40 priorities or recommended items and they just don't know where to start. Other communities, they're super busy, they're always in reaction mode, they're scrambling for funding opportunities that come up um, and they don't have a, any plan and they wonder why they're always seem to be uh, chasing, their, chasing their tails. So we're suggesting if you have a strategic uh, plan, a uh, short, concise plan, uh, you'll be better off. So by developing the toolkit, uh, what do we hope to do? We hope to empower local leaders. Um, most politicians uh, in, in communities say they're going to try and do something around economic development. Um, but what does that mean? Um, they'll say we're open for business. What does that mean? What concrete actions are they taking to, um, to prove that out? Um, by using the toolkit, we're hoping to give you an achievable process, uh, regardless of what stage you're at. Um, we want to break down the whole process into manageable pieces, uh, give you a self-guided, customizable, step-by-step -step approach. Um, it starts with initial self-assessment that can tailor the, the process to your community's needs. Um, a lot of things within a strategic plan you may have already done, like a SWOT analysis or a asset inventory. We're not suggesting you redo those. Um, we're just saying um, we want every community is different and we wanted the toolkit to be designed to take that into account and be customizable to, uh, to your specific uh, situation. So in the end, the toolkit should deliver a manageable um, eight to 12 page plan, uh, maybe even uh, uh, there's an option to do a plan on a page. So get it down to a one page plan that can sit on your council's desk and they can refer to it as you as you move along throughout the year or, or a couple year period um, to see how you're, you're doing. And the toolkit finally is web based and downloadable. Uh, when we set this up, we envisioned three approaches uh, for uh, doing, using the toolkit. Uh, one, the community could lead its own process with existing staff if they have those in-house resources, either their economic development officer or their uh, CAO could, could lead the process. Um, a second approach would be to have um, REO regional managers like myself uh, to assist in facilitating the planning process, help working with communities to, to lead them through the process, or you could uh, hire a consultant to help facilitate the process. And we thought uh, potentially accessing the Rural Dividend Fund um, in the, the $10,000 uh, bucket for, uh, for planning. Uh, like I said, the, the toolkit structure has been set up that um, there's some uh, worksheets and things you can do before starting the planning process just to get you uh, set up and ready, um, get your project team identified and available. And then you go through the, the self-assessment tool, which essentially, like I said, it, it, it walks you through and, and helps you see what you already have completed and what you need to do. And then by, by um, going through that self-assessment tool, you can see which pieces of the toolkit you can pull out and, and then use to get to a complete package. It's kind of like the analogy of, you know, you have to fix your car, you maybe you need an oil change, you bring it into the shop, you go over to your toolbox and pull out the specific wrenches and tools that you need to do that job specifically. 
um, and you don't you're not going to use every tool in the toolkit you're just going to use what you specifically need to do that job so we tried to set up this, the toolkit in a way that would allow you to, to only use the pieces that you needed so on the web page uh, what it looks like um, you can see there hopefully it's it's clear on your screen there's um, five different uh, components getting started where are we now where do we want to go how are we going to get there and are we getting there so this, um, and each one of those five sections has uh, components to it um, and uh, at this point I'm going to turn it over to Kathy to to walk you through those five uh, pieces. Wonderful, thanks Mark. Uh, as Mark mentioned, there are five uh, components to the toolkit. Uh, the first one, getting started, uh, contains the self-assessment, so you understand as a community what, what you've already created and what you, needs to be um, it done yet. Um, having those, starting to have those conversations with stakeholders and building that project team and developing that work plan that's ultimately going to take you forward. Next slide, Mark. So the next module is um, focusing on understanding where the community currently is and identifying, uh, further identifying your stakeholders and starting to identify the community strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. Next slide. So once you understand where the community is now, you can start um, identifying processes that are going to help the community identify where it wants to go. Next slide. So this module uh, helps in identifying the goals and actions that will go into the plan. Um, and help identify and uh, prioritize the, um, the goals and actions that the community wants to move ahead uh, with. And then next slide. And then an important uh, part of the economic development strategy is monitoring and evaluating the plan as it's implemented. You want to know that the plan is doing um, what, what you set out to do. And if you find that you're not, then you can go back and go back to one of the other uh, modules and, and redo it or refocus whatever the community is um, uh, looking to do. Next slide. So we hope that uh, this can be a valuable tool for you and your community and uh, we're going to have some examples of communities that have used the toolkit and I'm uh, looking forward to folks having any questions. Yes, Kathy will answer all the questions. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. All right, well, we well. have, we have uh, I'm excited to say, we have 44 attendees on today's webinar. Which is, oh, nice. which is top notch. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, just a reminder, if you've got questions to ask, there's a little box on your GoToWebinar control panel that says uh, enter a question for staff or something similar. Every now and then they change it on me. Um, but feel free to enter something in there and uh, in a break I will direct it towards the correct speaker. Um, I wanna encourage people to do that. Also, I wanna say that if we end up running late because we have really good questions. I will let this go on. Um, we're scheduled for 75 minutes, and I don't want us to lose any of the fabulous information and knowledge sharing. Um, with that, I'm also, well, we're, we're <laughs> coming to the next speaker. Um, Kathy and Jeff, let me just actually change my screen here. All right, we're going to have Kathy Lockman and Jeff Miller talk about the Gold River experience and using the strategic planning toolkit uh, in Gold River. Um, and oh, before we go, we have a question that's just come in. Oh, someone has asked, is this toolkit something a post-secondary student could volunteer to assist a community with? Why don't we answer that before we go on? Sure, uh, most definitely. I, I think that would be awesome. It'd be a um, great experience and would help a community for low cost. Yeah, yeah I, I would echo that. I think anyone that's willing to just uh, seize it and, and lead, um, maybe they're, they're not as um, 
connected or in a compromised position like someone that would be on a on a village staff or 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 whatnot so i think that's an excellent idea yeah it's really good practice actually the the SWOT analysis part is really good practice for a, a BCom student or a, someone doing a public administration degree or community development a program to uh, start looking at things. And someone has asked, where can you get an outline or uh, oh, of, sorry, where can you get an outline of or the actual workbook itself? It's downloadable right off the website. Yeah. So if you go to gov.bc.ca slash economic development, uh, you're looking in the planning and measuring your economic development efforts, I believe is the category you're looking for um, on the, the website. Alrighty, we will change things over to Kathy. Are you ready, Kathy? I'm ready. Okay, it's coming your way. Is it coming my way? Okay, yeah. I click that button, that button, and uh, slideshow. How's that? We got it. Great. Hey, yes. Wonderful. Um, thank you. Uh, this is uh, what we're going to talk about has been a very exciting process for both uh, for Jeff and myself. Um, we're going to talk about the Gold River experience. Um, Gold River is located about one hour west of Campbell River in the traditional territory of the Mochat Mushlat Nation. It has a population of about 1,200 people and they were very interested um, in doing an economic development strategy. They had not had one since uh, 1998. But like many small communities, you had very limited budget. So they were successful in applying to Rural Dividend for $10,000 planning grant. And they hired Jeff Miller from Miller & Associates to, uh, to assist the community in developing the, the strategy. And so Jeff and I partnered on, on doing this process. And we went to the toolkit. The toolkit is what we thought was going to get us through this process. And um, the t uh, oh, I guess I can do this. Uh, this is just a, a screenshot of the toolkit quick start guide. That is the first document we went to to kind of tell us, okay, uh, this is what we want to do, what pieces of the toolkit are going to help us uh, through this process. So I am going to turn this over to Jeff Miller from Miller & Associates, and he is going to take you through uh, the process that we used in Gold River. So you're going to see a little bit of a switch here because we're sharing a computer. Good morning, everyone. The toolkit was a great resource for Gold River and for Kathy and, and myself as we, as we moved through it. And it really clarified a number of areas for the project team and municipal council in Gold River. Overall, the toolkit helped, uh, it connected the community vision to the strategic plan, which was very important. It built a collaborative plan. It created a plan with goals that were specific, measurable, achievable, they were relevant to the community and the community's vision, and they were time-based, and this is where the ease of implementation came, came into it. And finally, they created flexibility, which is linked to the anticipated growth of Gold River, available budget, and the human resources that they had in order to be able to implement the strategic plan. The steps in the planning process are really very logical, sequenced, and they begin and conclude with the community values, as you can see in this flowchart. In general terms, this process is how we interpreted the toolkit actions for Gold River. That's the toolkit actions that you saw in the presentation earlier from Mark and Kathy. And now here in more detail is how we personalized the toolkit to Gold River. Uh, in starting on the left-hand column at the top with uh, municipal council's approval and, and including hiring uh, myself as the consultant uh, through several meetings that the project team had right down to the, to the planning session. And then over at the top of the right-hand column was drafting the, the strategy itself through all those uh, stages, uh, having a community meeting, uh, finalizing the strategy and then presenting an adoption by council and then into the implementation stage. The most important thing and really what it's all about is making sure that the community 
provides direction. And through a variety of tools in the community consultation stage, it was the community members who really pointed the way in Gold River. In community consultation, how do we connect with the community? Well, first of all, we connected through SurveyMonkey for online surveys. We kept the survey simple with just eight questions. One thing that we talked about afterwards, in retrospect, we didn't have the age of respondents or the length of residency in Gold River, and that's something that we would consider next time and something for you to consider as well. Organizing one-on-one -on -one meetings with suggested contacts that came from project team input. This was time consuming, but certainly very important. Some local business owners and others in the community didn't want their opinions necessarily aired in public, in a public setting. So having that one-on-one -on -one meeting was, was very important. Taking time to set up the focus groups properly, be organized, arrange the hospitality, that's the coffee and the water and comfortable setting and, and, and uh, taking pictures of the focus groups and other public meetings, people don't mind that at all. And confirm attendance if possible and follow up with the people that don't attend, make sure they provide their comments to you by email or at the very least that they go to the online survey. And one final comment about the focus groups is it's preferable to use a tag team approach for this focus groups. Uh, one person leads and, and moves the, uh, the attendees through the process and one maintains the flip chart and, and records all the comments. In the literature review, this was a very important step, both in the preparation stage and during the strategic planning process. And the relevant documents may be suggested by the project team or municipal staff. The official community plan, obviously, would be one. The, uh, the relevant documents would also include previous strategies and that community vision. And uh, the community vision is actually very important. And this is quoted directly from the Strategic Planning Toolkit. I'll just let you read that uh, on, on the screen. The two interlocking circles at the bottom show how community development and economic development are just intrinsically linked. Very important, that quality of life and, and the housing and social welfare and all the services that are provided to the community on that community side, plus the economic development component, the standard of living and, and business in the community. So very important, and that comes out in the uh, community values. This is an example from the Gold River strategy, and these are the seven areas that uh, through the community and through the, the consultation and meetings with the project team and, and with municipal council, these are the seven target areas for the uh, uh, for the strategic planning uh, process, uh, including governance, image of the community, business retention and expansion, business attraction, downtown, the waterfront, and partnerships. And those are the areas that we expanded on throughout the strategy. So the implementation of the action steps in this process was used to direct the implementation stage for Gold River and is taken from the toolkit with just some minor adaptations. So the first, of course, is the steps to success, resources required, the cost of the action step, the human resources that are required to implement it, and then the timelines. On the next slide, I've got a, uh, a screenshot of one of the action steps, just to give you an example of what it looked like in, in our case with Gold River. And just notice the very first uh, two lines there shows the action item itself. And then the next two paragraphs are the background detail, then three, in this case, three very clearly delineated steps, the resources required to implement it and the funding sources, and then the timelines. So the one uh, uh, the item that's not necessarily shown here is the evaluation, which is really showing what success looks like. And in some cases, it's really self-explanatory. In Gold River, some simple overall next steps from the Gold River strategy. Uh, council approval is monitored annually and the work is completed project by project. And there's advice and support and expertise that comes from the economic development contractors. And, and finally, uh, local supervision and oversight provided by the Economic Development Committee who will report all that back to Council. So what did we learn from the Gold River experience? First of all, it doesn't need to be a mega strategy. It's very important to fit the plan to the community. Take pictures, 
Can't emphasize this enough. It is easy to forget. Communicate often with the project team and with the community and, and respond quickly to the questions or comments. They want to make sure that you're very um, interactive with them. Don't skimp during the community consultation stage. It's important to do that job properly. And finally, yes, take pictures. Well, we can emphasize this again. It's great for the record, for council, and for the final report, and for other PowerPoint presentations. So that's our presentation on the Gold River experience. On behalf of myself, Jeff Miller, and Kathy Lockman from Flynn Roard, uh, thank you very much. And, and also, I'd, I'd like to, at this point, um, just interject a big thank you to the mayor and council of the village of Gold River, the chief administrative officer, and to the members of the project team. So that's, uh, that's it for uh, the Gold River experience. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, Kathy or myself will be happy to answer them. Thank you so much. Uh, we do indeed have some questions. Um, how did you control who did the online survey? For example, were they residents or not? Um, did, did you get duplicate response? And there's a second question coming as well, but I'll let you answer that one first and then I'll ask you the second question. The, 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 the first question came, well, basically the uh, uh, Gold River is a, um, is, is, is a, it's a long, <laughs> A long way from the other communities on the uh, west coast of Vancouver Island and from Campbell River, our uh, our promotion for the uh, for people to interact with the survey was done through uh, th through notices throughout the community, uh, through interaction with the service clubs uh, on the municipal website, and uh, as there's no newspaper or radio station specific to Gold River, uh, that was the best way to get it out. The uh, the people that uh, that responded. Uh, came in from uh, it came in locally and through Survey Monkey uh, they uh, don't allow duplicate responses in Survey Monkey. Oh, okay, that that makes it handy. Um, okay, uh, second question: How did regional or provincial or federal economic development? Uh, oh, there was next to the question. Uh, Connie, do you want to try revising the second part of your question because I don't see a verb. <laughs> I need a verb, please. Uh, another question has come in, however. For Gold River, did you have a strategy for getting people involved from uh, populations that typically don't participate? For example, new Canadians, people in poverty, or minorities? The, uh, the, the, the I guess the most important group for us uh, uh, was the... Um, uh, was the Mochat Mushalat First Nations, and uh, we met with the. Uh, there was a there was actually a transition of uh, uh, of managers for the uh, band managers for the uh, for the First Nations, and uh, we did meet with uh, uh, with him uh, a couple of times and exchanged emails during the uh, the process. And uh, as much as possible, we had interaction with them. And uh, they had just hired a new economic development officer at the same time as the process was uh, was going on and we had some uh, some response from her as well so uh, and some and some suggestions for the strategy uh, as far as uh, the other folks in the community it's a community of 1200 people and so consequently it's a very tight circle and uh, we through the through the focus groups that we had and through the one-on-one -on -one contacts and and just meeting people at coffee shops and and uh, going around door to door, we were able to, uh, we feel, make uh, make a very good um, connection with the um, with, with certainly everyone that was over the age of 15 in the community. Great. Okay, here's the other half of the, what, that second question. Uh, how did regional, provincial, federal economic development strategies or initiatives tie in with your work? Well, the, the uh, certainly the, the Strathcona Regional District uh, has uh, uh, has some work undergoing and uh, ongoing in the uh, in in terms of uh, communication improvement in the in the form of uh, of uh, web access for uh, for Gold River and for the other communities uh, at the northern end of Vancouver Island. So uh, that obviously tied into what we do and that was uh there was funding there through island coastal economic trust as well as uh as well as the regional district and the province and federal government uh the working with uh with kathy lockman from uh, uh from flynn road was really 
uh, I think, key to getting the project completed. Uh, and and Kathy was the um, uh, what was uh, the entree, if you want to call it, or the, uh, the, the enabled us to uh, to connect with other branches of the provincial government that uh, that were able to um, uh, affect some input and changes to the strategy as we move through it. It helps if I unmute myself. <laughs> okay, uh, we have a notes from someone on the on the webinars. Uh, paper copies of the Gold River Survey were also available for people who were not able to do it online. Rachel, Thank you. Comment. Yes, Thank and, you. and I'm glad. Uh, 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 Kathy did uh, correspond with uh, the municipal office, and the project team members were informed about that. And uh, hopefully, that was one of the project team members, and we did have copies available at the uh, municipal office uh, for those that did not have online access. Right. Okay. So um, I had seen someone had raised their hand. Um, but they must have lowered their hand again. Perhaps they were just stretching. Um, so we have a couple more minutes for questions. We're doing really well on time, everybody. This is fabulous. So um, all right. We can always come back and ask more questions of any of the speakers at the end of the session. So uh, what I will do is I'm going to now introduce our next speaker. This is Joanne Doddridge from 100 Mile House, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, the 100 Mile House strategic planning experience, including working with uh, the council. Um, having been a counselor, I can say that uh, we're friendly types, but sometimes fearsome. So Joanne, have we got you? Have I got you unmuted? That's an important question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, there we go. Uh, Joanne, Joanne and I decided that uh, a webcam was not going to happen today because she has a Surface Pro and I couldn't guarantee I'd be able to troubleshoot any issues. So she's coming to us um, like she's on the radio. So thanks for joining us, Joanne. Take it away. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Yes, they asked me if I would uh, speak to our experience working with the Strategic Planning Toolkit in 100 Mile House and specifically working with, with our council. So uh, I'm sure I will echo a lot of the same things as um, Jeff did for Gold River. Um, so I'm Joanne Doddridge. I work in economic development and planning here at the District of 100 Mile. I've been here about 10 years. Uh, 100 Mile House is in the Sequepam traditional territory. We're located on Highway 97, where we see approximately two, two and a half million vehicles a year travel through the center of our community. 100 Mile is also uh, very small. We have a population of about 2,000, but we service a much larger area. Let me just advance my slides. Um, uh, Probably around 15,000 uh, is our regular service area population, but that grows to about 25,000 in the summertime. We have a council of five and a staff, a total staff of about 16 to 20, and that includes our, our public works and our municipal office staff. And our annual taxation collection is around 2.7 million. So I share that with you um, to just basically um, sh show the need for a strong economic development plan as we are a sort of a commercial center, but understanding that we have some limitations as far as time and staffing goes to undertake strategic planning. It was easy for us to think we were alone in this whole uh, strategic planning, not having a good strategic plan. Uh, before we got started with the toolkit, but in fact, about 23% of small municipalities either don't have an economic development plan or don't actively use one. So we weren't alone. We did have an economic development strategy of sorts. It was very outdated. Uh, it was not very strategic. There were a lot of statements, um, nice statements about supporting different industry sectors. It was not workable for staff. We couldn't build a work plan from you know, the strategic plan we had or the plan we had. And we were never really sure if our efforts were on track with what council wanted or what, what the community wanted. So basically, um, 
it it was a plan that was useful when it was first developed, but it was no longer useful to us. And we fell within, you know, into that 23% of small municipalities without a plan. But we did have a lot of the documents, Jeff referenced quite a few, we did have a lot of plans already in place that incorporated economic thinking and economic, uh, I guess, components of an economic strategy. We had a brand new OCP and zoning bylaw. We had tried to really reduce regulation for business in the new bylaw. Uh, we had a sustainability plan within which the economy was one of the pillars. Um, Council's municipal goals and objectives. One area was sort of a high level economic development focus. We had recently done a building blocks workshop and we had policies and plans and studies uh, around sort of quality of life, trails, recreation planning, housing studies, that kind of thing. But but these these statements were all over the place and it was, we had no single place where all of this information was kind of housed. We also had a lot of the components of the toolkit already. We had a vision statement, a good understanding of uh, sort of the key facts in our community and, and our community assets. We had a, already undertaken a SWOT analysis fairly recently. And we were doing all kinds of economic development work within council's generally you know, established priorities, but without really clear direction. So what we wanted was a focused economic development plan and it had to be strategic and it had to be functional. We needed to bring all of this information into one place. Our council did not want a strategy as such. Um, so we didn't call it a strategy. It was a working session and and unlike, you know, sort of the focus uh, Jeff, Jeff and uh, Kathy, you know, were talking about, we opted not to do public consultation uh, during our process uh, for a couple of reasons, and I should probably explain some of them. First, we, we had recently undertaken a bunch of planning exercises that involved uh, public consultation and attendance at different meetings and our tactics to try to involve the public were, were sort of dwindling. We had a business walk planned uh, for very shortly after our toolkit session. And so we did. We wanted to avoid duplication of our efforts with, with consultation. And really, I think the big thing was the timing that we undertook this process was right after the fall, after our big wildfire season. We had a lot of resources offered to the community. And so there was a lot of outreach taking place. Uh, our wildfire recovery manager, one of her key roles was to do public outreach. And I think quite frankly, our public was, our residents were sort of saturated. There was a lot going on and they just wanted to get their lives back on track, their businesses up and running again. So we opted not to do public consultation at that time. Plus, we just really needed a starting point. We needed something where all these various bits and pieces of resources were all brought together. We didn't anticipate that we would see a lot of new direction out of the toolkit process. It was welcome if, if that's what happened, but we weren't really anticipating anything new, just a compilation of, of all of these resources together. And we had no time and no money. So how we use the toolkit, first uh, we reached out to our regional manager, Emily Colombo, who then reached out to colleagues, uh, Brad and Mark. Um, together we sort of brainstormed how to fit the toolkit to meet our needs and our timeline and our budget. Uh, we completed the self-assessment tool that was mentioned just to get focused and then started this compilation process of pulling together all these various documents I mentioned and also all the work that was already uh, underway. And together, uh, I think we all sort of brainstormed and distilled all of that information into five major themes and strategic areas, which these are the five that we settled on in our community and we combined them sort of as appropriate. Each one you can see has an and in inside. So 
that's when we took it all to council. We held a council senior staff workshop in the evening. It was facilitated uh, by our by our friends, uh, our regional managers. Uh, it was a very casual setting, and there was pizza, I recall. So we probably, I don't know, this is probably the lowest tech uh, avenue uh, possible that we took, where we took each of those strategic areas, each of the, the five that were on the previous slide, put one on a piece of poster paper each, and then listed all the key activities we were already doing underneath those strategic areas. And then we just simply asked council, hey, what, you know, what do you think? What's missing? Do we need to add something or or what do we have up there that's not needed? Should you know, should we juggle some of these action items around? Do they belong better in a different strategic area? And so we just had a conversation and we landed upon a great list of strategic areas and activities. Some of them were new, mostly they were not new. They were activities we were already doing. And then we just applied a very simple uh, exercise to prioritize those major strategic areas. And we just used a simple dot system to do that. But also each of the activities that we had previously sort of brainstormed and listed, we wanted to determine how financially realistic they were, how easy they were to implement, and what kind of benefit they would yield. So again, very simply, we just kind of gave it a ranking from one to five, uh, how financially realistic, how easy to implement, and what the benefits were, and came up with a with a number. We added, you know, we added up the, the totals. This gave us a really clear picture of our priorities right away, and everybody you know, sort of got to participate and see it unfolding in front of them. Then it was just a simple matter of using the toolkit to actually create the plan. I think what worked for us, um, it, this process, the toolkit and the process really confirmed council's direction rather than starting from scratch. It's, it's daunting to think to do strategic planning from scratch. Uh, but the toolkit really helped us. It helped by using plans we already had and incorporating all our existing work and policies. Um, so we're, again, we're not reinventing anything. The toolkit was customizable to meet our needs, council's needs and staff needs um, sort of together. And we were very focused on economic uh, recovery. It was still very fresh for us uh, after the wildfire season. So we wanted to make sure we included a placeholder in our active plan for this wildfire recovery and the toolkit was able to help us do that. I guess overall it was a positive session. It felt like council and staff were working together and, and as I said we could see those priorities unfolding right in front of us as we added up the numbers uh, of our priority session. The toolkit was very easy to use. It never felt like we were strategic planning um, it didn't feel like we were using a template. It was just very natural and, and it flowed really well. Our plan is very simple uh, to start. There's lots of gaps in it still. Not every part of the toolkit was used, but we, we hope to build on that over time and round it out over time. It didn't take very long from the time I picked up the phone to chat with Emily until the evening workshop was just about six or eight weeks. Uh, it was very practical to use and we have a workable plan now, something that we can actually pick up and use uh, to create a work plan and start to measure some of our some of our efforts. And so now, even though we didn't undertake a public consultation process uh, when we first developed this plan, uh, we now have something in our hand that we can use to engage the public. And I think that's going to be helpful again, not starting from scratch. So now it's been a year, uh, we have a new council, and so it just makes sense that we can pull that plan up, we can update our progress on it, we can revisit those same strategic areas and see if they need to be shifted a, a bit or see if we need to, to change or add or, or otherwise sort of uh, move our focus and then apply a new priority exercise. And again, um, I think we can update this plan in-house 
uh, for now as we you know s start to build it and round it out so I guess a big takeaway if I've said it a few times um, confirming our direction was much much easier than starting from scratch and so I think that the toolkit was the framework that allowed us to just sort of pull together all the various pieces of information we already had and and use that to sort of fill in the blanks. Cool. Thank you, Joanne. That was wonderful. Um, you mentioned, I was just thinking, I wonder how long this took them, but you had mentioned that your session with council was an evening session. So. Yes, it was just a couple of hours, one evening, and then a little bit of work at my desk to use the template to actually create the plan. That sounds very doable, very mm -hmm. feasible. Great. Um, is it is um is the result on the hundred mile house website at all? I looked, I couldn't find it, but I was just doing a cursory glance. You know, I don't think we posted it there because one of the action items in our plan is to improve our economic development website or web page, and so that is on our books for next year. So. Uh, so you'll see something up there, you know, when that happens. Okay, great. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to open it up and see if anyone who's on the call has questions. I've just noticed that we have people uh, from as far away as Saskatchewan, so that's exciting. I was just looking at our mm -hmm. attendee list and didn't recognize some names, so I did some Googling. Um, so, yeah, we have some time for questions uh, for Joanne. If any of our other speakers have questions as well, you can unmute yourself and ask them. I'm enjoying the um, seeing what different communities are doing. Um, one question we have uh, from a frequent flyer, Connie. Thank you for all your questions, Connie. Um, any surprise outcomes from your planning session? Um, I don't think we had any surprises no um, but like I said we we just really needed to bring all these little bits of information together into a comprehensive place um, so I think we already knew sort of what our council wanted and didn't want out of the session so I think that was pretty helpful as well and and uh, we knew that Mark wanted pizza, so that was not a surprise. <laughs> it, it was excellent, by the way. And, and uh, yes, regional managers are there available to help, and we can be easily baited with food. <laughs> <laughs> food, always a necessity. Um, here's another question, Joanne. 100 Mile House is a forestry-based community, and the forest sector is changing. Is economic diversification included in your ECTEV plan? Yeah, economic diversification is always um, front of mind. Um, our key areas of focus uh, were sort of drawn from work that was already being done, including sort of business uh, retention. So um, economic transition is, is definitely uh, front of mind for us right now. So when we pick up our plan again, which we hope to do early in the new year with our new council, um, that diversification uh, could could rise even higher uh, as a priority in the in the plan moving forward. All right, thank you. And um, here is another question for presenters, and I think also uh, Kathy and Jeff might answer this for Gold River as well. Uh, did you have any challenge to implement the economic development plan in your community? I know, uh, just before you answer that, I know that Declan will be talking about his implementation plan as the next presentation, but for Joanne and for Jeff, um, what were some of the challenges that you faced in implementing the plan? Think, think, think. <laughs> <laughs> we need to run the Jeopardy theme song. Our plan is very simple. Um, to start with and so because it was drawn from actions that and work that was already being done it's sort of a matter of um, me staying on top of the 
the goal areas and ensuring I revisit the plan on a very regular basis uh, to make sure that that I'm on track and that I'm working towards towards the actions and the milestones that that we set up. Uh, so I think moving forward as our plan probably grows in complexity, it it we may encounter more challenges with implementation. But right now it's it's a work it's a workload um, it's a workload management kind of um, challenge. That's that's our biggest challenge. It's always nice to put things into a strategic plan that you know you're already doing. Sometimes people get into a room with flip charts and markers and post-it notes and think that this is an opportunity to write down every good idea that they have for their community and it becomes a, a, a make work or a make to-do list session. But it sounds like you guys really avoided that by focusing on um, organizing what you had instead of inventing new work. Maybe I could jump in, Susan, uh, Mark here. Um, it, it was really gratifying to see the toolkit doing what it was intended to do, which was, um, you know, being able to be totally tailored to the situation that Joanne had in Hunter Mile, using the documents and not repeating steps that they, they did and coming up with a very um, usable, workable plan that they could action. Um, you know, many communities, like I said, if you've got, you know, 50 number one priorities, you don't have any priorities. So getting it down to um, a number of, of uh, strategic areas and then having a very clear process to prioritize based on, you know, is it having an impact? Is it, you know, do we have the, the dollars and the energy to do it? Um, that gave them very clear direction. Great. Um, Kathy, do you or Jeff want to weigh in on any challenges to implement the economic development plan in Gold River? I see you're still muted at the moment. Oh, there we go. The, uh, thanks, Susan. The, uh, the, the challenges I think are mainly going to be w w with the municipal council and the project team as well because, um, and, and the economic development committee because the, uh, the strategy was developed and, and the, the, throughout the process we talked about the restrictions that people are going to face and that includes the economic development resources that are available to them uh, the, uh, the the dollars the, uh, the the human resources factor too so all of those things the challenges will come about uh, in the implementation stage and uh, it is now in the community hands for that process to move forward which is what the community is doing right now She's muted again. Ah, uh, you think I would have had this one figured out by now. <laughs> uh, that was an excellent segue into our next presentation by Declan Costania, who is uh, with the Regional District of Kitimat Stikim. And uh, Declan is going to talk about how his uh, economic development strategy came together. I'm going to change the presenter over to you. It's coming your way. There we go. I don't suppose you have any way of uh, closing that blind behind you, do you? Uh, actually, I think I do. Yeah, that, that way we can actually see your face and not the, uh, not the window. There we go. That, that makes it a little bit better. There we go. A little bit better? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm sending you the presenter controls. All right. That should be up. It is. All right. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Declan Corsani. I'm the Economic Development Officer for the Regional District of Kitimat Stikim, uh, based here in Terrace on the uh, beautiful Simshan Nation territory, specifically the uh, Kitsum Kilim and Kitsilis First Nations. Um, so I'm going to speak a little bit about the Regional District's perspective on economic development. Um, and and sort of how I come into things and how I sort of took uh, the visioning and the strategic areas and turn them into you know action items and uh, and sort of where we uh, have gone with it and where we're at right now. Um, so I'm I'm structured very uh, interestingly. Um, 
we serve the municipalities uh, regionally. Um, the regional district serves Kitimat, Terrace, Hazleton, New Hazleton, Stewart, and electoral areas A through F. Um, but my uh, makeup of how I deliver uh, my services is actually split um, between uh, the whole regional district and what's called the Economic Development Commission uh, service area. Uh, the Economic Development Commission is made up of representatives of the municipalities of Hazleton, New Hazleton, Stewart, and the electoral area directors. Um, and then the regional economic development operations are uh, in, include Terrace and Kitimat. Um, so this sort of looks at how it's sort of broken down, um, sort of board priorities, things that affect the whole region um, that Terrace and Kitimat, their, their economic development staff may not um, direct um, resources towards, um, I would take care of. And then the commission, um, I sort of act as capacity for Hazleton, New Hazleton, Stewart and the electoral areas. And uh, and we sort of go off of the, the plan that we've created um, and um, move forward with um, ideas. And things. So we did uh, a strategic plan. We worked over the, we had a, an older plan from uh, 2016, I believe, late 2015, 2016. Um, and we, uh, it was a bit, general and, and needed to be a little bit more refined. And so we went into a strategic planning process. We came up with uh, the vision uh, you're reading now. Um, and so that sort of broke down into the strategic areas, um, workforce and resident attraction through to uh, tourism marketing. Um, and we, uh, during our strategic area process, actually had uh, Mark come in and, and help with that. Um, and we did the, the dot democracy and that was, um, things were ranked and, uh, we came out with the top five. Um, and so then from the, uh, the action, I going from the strategic areas, developing action items within those, um, I think, uh, Joanne touched on it, uh, feasibility, complexity and benefits, um, uh, matrix, um, and you know we i sort of in the plan and, and and in the process spoke to you know if there's a quick win or something is available and and it, although it may be lower priority uh than something else that currently is unactionable uh we would act on that lower priority thing to um sort of take it off and, and move forward with the plan uh so we came out with these action items uh you can sort of see that they range from five to very many um action items um i sort of generalized them here um and and they've been actually quite reasonable uh to, to work on uh, and we've been moving through them um you know surely uh, slowly but surely um to sort of create some more structure because the the previous plan was very uh general um and having an actual dedicated economic development staff member um you know uh, as part of staff is actually relatively new to the regional district um the plan i think was created back in 2015 uh, around the same time they actually hired their first economic development officer under um planning and economic development um so i wouldn't i'm the second iteration of that and because things are still relatively new in that regard uh it's very unstructured so i thought i'd um take the action items and strategic areas a little bit further create a little bit more structure for the commission and and for efficiencies on my end uh to and so i kind of came up with this sort of strategic area plan of where we would go and um take something that if it's a new action item new uh direction uh from the commission we would go out and do start by um determining uh its feasibility at a more detailed granular level and get some more uh, detailed engagement from the com uh, communities that we would be performing those actions in um coming out with an actual feasible option or options uh get the commission's input and then carry forward on um the the one that commission uh, the commission chooses um 
going from action items into um, the implementation and uh, evaluation. Um, we, in the pro uh, strategic planning process, uh, it was um, clear, or it, we, I made it clear that we did not want to die by the numbers. So uh, I mentioned workforce and resident attraction as a, a strategic area. Uh, increasing the number of work uh, people in the workforce in our region um, is not exactly the best um, stat to go off of, um, especially if um, you know we had the plan adopted in March and we recently had um, the final investment decision of uh, LNG Canada uh, being the the green light um, area. You know our our workforce numbers are going to go up and. I unfortunately can't take uh, credit for that. Uh, so, you know, with our implementation plan, um, there's an example there. Uh, we look at things that um, we can control uh, as a department um, and really where, uh, where we want to act because we are not creating the jobs. It's other um, employers in the region that are creating jobs and we need to assist them in uh, filling the positions that they make available. Um, so, uh, and just with this strategic area here, um, we followed a very same, a similar theme for each uh, strategic area. Um, post uh, completion of the plan, we've had some successes uh, in the workforce and resident attraction, tourism marketing, and the business retention and expansion um, strategic areas. Um, number one, uh, our there was a study done by the Kitimat Valley Institute um, that identified uh, a base case of jobs becoming available over the next, I think it's next uh, eight years, a uh, thousand jobs annually per year, uh, and most of that being due to retirement. So there's going to be a major um, need for workforce and uh, that our population currently can't um, fill 100%. Uh, and then with the uh, uh, additional jobs coming from um, larger industrial uh, projects, um, there's an increased need uh, to fill uh, and to fill up the workforce and the need in the region. Um, so what came from this was a commitment to um, workforce and resident attraction. Uh, we had some funding from the BC Rural Dividend Fund to complete a marketing plan um, for the region, uh, for the Northwest as we called it, our partners being the District of Kitimat, City of Terrace, uh, District of Stewart, District of Hazleton, uh, or Village of Hazleton, District of New Hazleton, and the City of Prince Rupert. Um, we've, uh, the regional district uh, has committed uh, some funding over uh, process of the first few years of the project. Um, and we're going to be carrying that over the next uh, bunch of years, depending on how things go. We're going after funding, uh, support, and uh, and trying to start on our the first steps of the plan. Um, very similarly, uh, tourism marketing. Um, we've recently um, tourism marketing was a, a strategic area that's continued over from the uh, older plan. Uh, we were able to get some funding through the Rural Dividend Fund Northern Development Initiative Trust um, and Destination BC. Uh, we partnered up with uh, the destination marketing and management organizations uh, from the region, Tourism Kitimat, uh, Commodity Tourism, as well as the municipalities of Hazleton, New Hazleton, Stewart, and the Niskalisms government. We all banded together came and came up with sort of a plan, a project to get some better data on our uh, our tourism in the region, uh, do some, uh, get some content, create a regional website, and do some marketing. Um, that plan is, uh, uh, is has taken off. We're uh, expecting some research back very soon. We've got a film company uh, doing some pre-production work, and uh, we'll be soon selecting a, a company to do the website. And so, tar uh, the uh, website and marketing stuff will uh, start up in 2019. Um, business retention and expansion. Uh, we've done. Uh, I've done three business walks in the region. Uh, I helped out with a few, and um, and on each one volume of people uh, people was the was the issue um staff uh, qualified staff enough staff 
uh, enough people to um, make retail and other services um, feasible um, were those were the issues and so we took that we did do some uh, some workshops from the needs that were expressed in the business walks as well as the um, workforce and resident attraction project um, that we're uh, propose, proposing to do to sort of um, counteract those, those issues. Um, so after things sort of complete, the, the projects kind of come to an end on, on a on a case by case basis. And then at the end of um, a proposed strategic areas lifespan, um, we'll go into uh, an evaluation of that um, so we'd survey our our partners and key stakeholders and sort of see you know has it achieved what we wanted it to achieve has it uh, overachieved underachieved what needs to be done to change it um, and uh, we haven't reached this process yet um, but we've got a plan which is nice so that once we kind of go into it where we're not looking at what we need to do we'll have that ready and um, as things change we'll be able to modify things um, yeah so um, I think Joanne also mentioned we've had some turnover in um, in our elected officials uh, the commission as well and the regional district as well um, so we need to check are our priorities the same now as they were before um, and uh, very similarly, we didn't do public engagement um, during our strategic planning process before. Um, I think that's a, a learning that, um, you know, now that we have a document in place and that we're just going to be doing some shifting, um, what we, what I think we'd like to do is um, kind of take the uh, draft priorities and go and engage uh, key stakeholders in the region. Um, our region being very large, uh, over 100,000 square kilometers, we've got uh, several stakeholders to engage. Uh, we'll try to stay, stay to the regional or um, full community um, stakeholders like chambers and, and regional DMOs and things like that. Um, finally, Final, uh, finalize the priorities and uh, we're currently in budgeting uh, season as well and so once that all sort of settles we'll have a pretty good idea of how things are going to turn out um, for 2019 and years to come um, yeah and that's sort of where we're at we're sort of in progress um, learning things as we go but I think we've been pretty successful so far um, and I'm looking forward to learning the priorities of the new uh, or, or new composition of the commission and uh, and seeing where we go from there. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Deglin. That was good. And I really like the bears. <laughs> Hopefully it didn't scare anybody. No, 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 not me at least. Um, <laughs> I got one request. Uh, would it be possible for you to share your full strategic plan? Um, is It's on your website, is it not? Um, I don't think it is. Uh, we're currently undergoing a revision of our regional right. district website. So oh, okay. uh, once that's out, um, we're gonna um, we'll have those documents available. And same thing with the regional, like the the strategic plan. Um, I, once that's all revised, then we'll have that um, out and about. But uh, if if anybody would like the document, I also have the plan on a page uh, that I can ah. share. Um, if anybody wants it, um, I can send that to them. Yes. So I think you've got um, your website, your email address is available on your website for the regional district of Kitimat, Sikkim, and the... Yes. Um, okay, good. Uh, if people can't find it there, you can email me at the economic development at gov.bc.ca account, and I'll put you in touch with Declan. Um, and, and just for people who are just joining us late, there is a recording of the webinar being made and it'll be posted in about a week to the um, gov.bc.ca slash economic development. Um, an interesting question that has come up, and actually this is something that you might answer, Declan, and anyone else, uh, any of our other speakers as well, um, to ensure that the plan, the big plan, doesn't just sit on a shelf, um, Making it simple and concise can be really helpful. How large is your plan and how large are typical plans, do you think? How big is your plan? <laughs> it's, uh, it's big in spirit. Um, well, I, I think it is uh, a large 
a large plan. Um, I think when we we developed it, instead of doing it for a three-year plan, uh, plans are typically three or five-year plans. We made it in a longer range planning just because it was, you know, the position having a dedicated active officer is actually relatively new um, and having a, a more uh, detailed strategic plan is new. Um, I think I, I anticipated some learning opportunities uh, in the coming uh, months and years, and uh, and I was right. Uh, so, with um, as we go along, refining it, um, making it more concise, and and with this reprioritizing um, opportunity with the new commission, um, you know, things can be um, tightened up or um, you know made more concise, and um, you know. I don't think we'll sh shorten the plan. This plan will not get uh, smaller uh, per se. Um, you know, having a long list of action items, um, I mean, you can take it or leave it. Having, uh, it's where the priority uh, priorities come into place, where if you have ranked strategic areas and within those you have ranked action items, you know which one is priority one. Um, you know, priority one in a lower ranking strategic area is still lower than priority one in a higher ranking strategic area. And, and just keeping, an, uh, uh, keeping the pulse on what's happening in your economy, what's happening in funding opportunities, what's happening with your partners and key stakeholders and your community members. Um, having the plan there and, um, allows you to adapt within it. Um, I don't think my plan is too large. I think it's, um, and I don't think it's necessarily small. Um, I, I think it's adequate and I, I think it will become more refined over time. Do you have lots of appendices? Um, we have, um, I mean, uh, no, actually, I don't think so. Uh, we just have sort of uh, where we came from with the, the data um, and, and research and, and literature review that was done at the start. Um, uh, there's some data referenced in it um, and then just past bylaws and how it came to be, the commission came to be, um, and, and, and the past plan and sort of showing where, we're, where we've come and, and where we plan to go. Um, that's sort of our, our appendices. So we we sort of uh, did the same thing as Joanne did with the uh, the poster paper and writing it all down and uh, doing it in a workshop format. Um, and I think it's it's a good way to go. Great. Uh, I've just realized that it's eleven thirteen. Um, so I think we will. Hold it there, and I have a couple of announcements to make. I just want to say, uh, I'm going to just change the presenter back to my slides here. Um, there we go. I just want to say a really big thank you to Kathy and Mark and Jeff and Declan and Joanne, uh, all of whom uh, have agreed to volunteer their time to help out with today's session and bring stories from their own community and how they use the strategic planning toolkit. Um, we had a couple of rehearsals and putting together a session like this with five guest speakers is kind of the grand finale for the Christmas season of the webinar, uh, Christmas ending of the webinar series. So thank you very much to all of you and everyone who joined us. Um, a few final uh, announcements. Um, yes, I'm working on the next season of webinars. I have seven or eight topics lined up to run from probably late January into May, um, dodging some of the conferences and other things coming up this spring, but I don't have the dates for you yet. So please keep your eyes on bit.ly slash webinars or the Economic Development website. After this webinar, uh, you will get, as an attendee, you will get a feedback survey for this webinar. And so please take a moment to do that. And that gives us an evaluation for this one. We're also looking at our entire webinar season, going back to September, and wanting your input for future sessions. Uh, so the website for that is bit.ly slash ECDEV webinar survey. And um, 
I will also be sending that out in an email to everybody who gets our regular emails. So um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us, uh, for joining us all autumn on the Economic Development Webinar Series. I'm really excited about some of the topics we have coming for you, things like how to put together uh, budgets for your grant applications, how to market your community, uh, talking about post-disaster marketing, um, building economic resilience through community economic development practices, uh, accessing capital for rural small businesses. Uh, there's three or four more, and I can't even remember them all. I'm just really excited about what I will bring to you. So I'm just going to go back up. So if you are wanting to keep your eyes out for the announcements, uh, they will be coming out possibly before Christmas, but definitely in early January. Um, write this down. This is the short link, bit.ly slash ecdevwebinars. Um, or if you lose that, you can always go to gov.bc.ca slash economic development and find everything, including the strategic planning toolkit. Um, thank you very much to everybody for joining us. And uh, although it seems very early to be saying this, I'm going to say a happy holidays uh, to all of you. And I hope you enjoy a wonderful holiday season. That is the end of the webinar. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Susan. Bye, everybody.